Okay, well, good job having a go at those. These are quite unusual questions, and if you don't know how to tackle them, they can be really daunting and really confusing. But don't worry, because we're going to go through all of these now. And once you understand kind of what to look for and, and the ways to do this quickly, you'll realize how quickly you can improve at this. So we have a load of questions here, so a load of grids and squares here with lots of random objects. I'll come on to talk about some theory and then we'll, we'll go through some answers for this. So the thing with words and objects, it can be challenging at first. We have lots of random letters mixed together. Um, it might be tempting to think that they will spell certain words or vowels. It'll be a case of vowels versus consonants or, you know, or it, every, in one set, all the grids spell maybe cities or you know, whereas the other grid spells uh, countries for example things like that fruits and vegetables really weird things and combinations that they might try and throw you with but what you'll see is when we're looking at words objects numbers it'll it in the abstract reasoning it will always be to do with uh, the physical shape and the properties of that shape rather than trying to find a meaning which is um this is, this, that's why the, the words and objects appear in, in the AR to kind of try and throw you. Um, so we all know that, so the, the reason it's abstract is because we all know that letters and words mean something, but in the context here, there isn't any real meaning associated to them. So you should almost imagine it as if it's a world whereby letters and numbers don't exist and you're and when you're just looking at these the same way, and this is just for the abstract reasoning, I'll be clear, um, but you should look at them the same way that you would look at a set of triangles or a set of circles. It would just treat them exactly the same as that for this part of the abstract reasoning. So, uh, looking at the, the questions, so we'll, we'll start with our usual kind of routine of going through Spartan's, Spartan IBS, and then we'll look at the more intuitive technique that's specific to shapes and numbers, okay? So, let's go through all of these. So, shape type, well, not really something that we can look at here because um, they're all very different shapes and, and uh, there's no real pattern there. Position, well, you could have, this could be something. It could be maybe everything has something in the corner or everything has something arranged in a certain way, but that is not the case for this particular one. Angles, I'll come on to talk about in a moment. Uh, root and direction, well, there's not really any, uh, the letters aren't really, they're all facing the same way, they're not pointing, there's no variance there, so so no. Touching side, nothing touching side. Area and size doesn't really apply to this. Uh, number of items, well, this could apply. However, you'll see here that there's no real rhyme or reason to any of these. Intersections. Um, we don't have any intersecting intersecting objects here. Um, borders and number of sides could be something. However, in this particular case, it, it would be quite laborious and time consuming to add up all the numbers of sides. But you will see here that there's uh, there's no actual uh, pattern to that. And shading here doesn't really apply because obviously we don't have shapes that are shaded. So, as I said, angles is one thing that actually is relevant here and actually is the pattern and the thing that distinguishes things. Now, when we talk about angles, it's pretty much invariably 90 degree angles because you can imagine in an abstract, fast paced, abstract reasoning test, if it's anything other than 90 degree angles, you can imagine splitting hairs between a 60, a 70 and a 50 degree angle would be tricky and it's not really definitive. So really, it's, we always look at right angles. And what I'm going to show you here is that some letters have certain right angles. So when we look at the E's, the H's, the F's, the T's, and the L's, they all have a certain number of right angles about them. So E and H have four, F has three, and T has two, and L has one. So now that we know that, let's go back to the shape and have a look. So um, this one, let's have a look how many right angles we've got. So we've got four in the H, three in the F, and two in the T. So that makes nine. Uh, here we've got 
uh, what is that? Three in the F times two, so that's six. Two in the T, uh, that's eight, and then nine again. Okay, so maybe it is that this has either an odd number, or maybe it is that they have nine. So nine sets of right angles per grid. So let's have a look per square, should I say? Uh, so we have four here, two here, so that's six, and then three is nine, so nine again. We've got four L's here, so that's four plus two in the T is six plus three is nine, and then you'll see that we have four, four, and one, nine, and then three threes, so nine. Okay, so we know that this is nine right angles in set A. Now let's have a look at B, what's, what's B got? So there are four in the H, four in the H again, so eight plus two in the T is 10, so maybe it's the nine versus 10, or more than, more than nine versus nine or less, could be. So let's just go through as we're postulating. So E and E is eight, uh, another two from both L's is 10, so that's 10, we've got 10 in the first two. We've got four and four, two is 10, so we can pretty much safely say, so 10 here with the two F's and the H. This is a nice one where we've got um, six single ones in the L's and then four here, so that's 10. So we can see they're all 10. Great, so that gives us a pattern. And um, we can see now that, um, oops, sorry, let's go forward again. Let's go, okay, great. So, Okay, great. So now that we have our pattern, let's go through each of the test shapes. So the first one we have here, um, let's see how many we have. We have four with the H, another four, and then two with the T, so that makes 10, so that would put it into set B. Then here we have three Fs, so that would give us nine, that goes into A. Here we have Four in the H, four in the E, another four in the E, so that's 12, plus the F is 15, so that's way over both, so that's neither. Uh, here we have, uh, let's see, so four and four plus uh, the two in the T and the one in the L, so that's 11, so again, that's neither. And then finally, we have a very simple one, which is four, four plus one, so that's nine. So that gives us the um, set, that puts into set A. So, as we always do, we have a look for the Spartan IBS because that is our safety net, that's our foolproof plan of, of getting everything done. However, when it comes to the abstract, abstract reasoning, we can use an intuitive technique, and that is um, the one that I'm about to show you. So let's look at, firstly, talk about some of the techniques. So remember that we need to look at the, the letters as shapes and not assign any meaning. So as I said before, if they spell countries in set A and citizens in set B, or try to find um, whether some have vowels or consonants, just it's, it's purely, that's what the definition of abstract is. It's not the, um, the, the kind of conventional meaning that you associate to it. So forget that they, forget, like I say, imagine a world where, where letters and numbers don't actually exist and you treat them exactly the same as if you're looking at a triangle or a circle or, or whatever. So we're assessing the physical properties of the shape. And um, you know, as we say, if you're nervous, uh, the best trick that you can do is to uh, see everybody, just imagine everyone in their pants. And that's just a silly little way of remembering that if you see some words or letters or objects in the abstract reasoning. Remember not to get confused with numbers in the quantitative reasoning. So if you see words or letters, you can think uh, think of it as don't poop your pants or <laughs> whatever silly thing it is, just that reminds you to use this acronym. So position, angles, number of items, type of shape, so curve versus straight, and the number of sides. And I've highlighted these in red because these are the most frequent that come up. Angles and a number of sides will be the ones that you see most frequently in these letters, numbers, types of questions. Okay, so we're gonna 
go over now to another set of questions. So I'm going to see you in the next one where we're going to be looking at questions around numbers and then we'll do some theory after. So great. Thanks for watching and I hope that cleared things up and I will see you in the next video.